the Samadhis of Egoity, March the 14th, 1994, taken from Ishta. In the way of the heart, conditional existence, meaning conditional forms, objects, the body, the body-mind, is not targeted as inherently problematic or negative, therefore as something that must be excluded. The ego presumes the problem of existence. The ego principle of the self-contraction, the act itself of self-contraction, is the reason that any form of objectivity or conductivity is viewed negatively or found to be a problem. Generally, within the traditions of religion and spirituality, the ego principle, the self-contraction itself, is not identified and transcended. Rather, sadhana is a struggle with conditions, and the body is regarded to be the problem. Ramana Maharshi, for instance, declared over and over again that the body is to be avoided, as if the body itself were the problem. In the Jain tradition, and very often in the Buddhist tradition, the same point of view appears. The ascetic practice of attempting to deal with conditions by dissociating from them has become part of traditional sadhana. The search in any form of, is the dramatization of egoity. The ego and not the ego's results or the things that arise to trouble it must be found, understood and transcended. The search to exclude the body-mind and the search to fulfil it are the gestures of egoity. The sadhana of the way of the heart is always the practice of locating the ego or the self-contraction transcending it in place and realising that which is always already the case. It is not struggling with the body-mind or doing things to it to transform it or evoking certain kinds of experiences in order to realise a res resultant state or experience that is then called divine or enlightenment or God realisation. All things that are acquired through the search or the animation of egoity are themselves conditional and dependent on conditional activity. They are not the realisation of that which is always already the case. They are the experiencing of something that can only temporarily be the case. If the realisation of the sixth stage of life, for example, depends on the exclusion of objects, no sixth stage samadhi can be permanent. What is not permanent is not always already the case. Truth is the realization of non separateness or that which is always already the case. Truth is not the realization or, or experiencing of anything that is arising conditionally or that is brought about by conditional effort or ego effort. When we discuss the religious and spiritual traditions, we are referring to rather advanced notions and prizes of self-pleasuring that are associated with the fourth, the fifth and the sixth stages of life. Yet, when I speak to you, I am speaking to people who are not altogether different from individuals in states of advancement in the great tradition, except that the objects you value are rather mundane. When you are caught up in your objects of self-pleasuring, you find them profoundly consoling and, in general, you speak as if you are willing to give up your whole life for them. There is not a profound or absolute difference between what you are doing in your entanglement with the lesser potentials of life in the first three stages of life and what others may be doing with the samadhis and experiences associated with the advanced fourth stage of life, the fifth stage and the sixth stage of life. The same point of view is exercised in the context of the later stages of life. The objects are different, but the point of view is fundamentally the same. It is the ego, narcissus, the self-contraction, finding results in one ob object or another, and willing to let that object be enough, suggesting the object is enough, suggesting it is the fulfilment of existence, suggesting there is no more to seek, or suggesting a profound most profound sense of consolation. You are in samadhi right now, right now. Not the samadhi of divine self-realization, 
certainly. But every one of you is in samadhi at this very moment. Every one of you is absorbed in some kind of self-pleasuring. And that, without your even saying a word, is your argument for non-practice. So if I ask each one of you, or any one of you, what is on your mind? What are you up to? The case talk starts flowing forward, and I hear you describe the objects of your samadhi. Just as fifth stage realizers talk about this blue light, this gold light, that red light, that black light, you talk about the objects of your absorption, and it is you. It is not the divine. It is not the ultimate realization. You think your absorption is happening to you. No, it is you. You are the source of your samadhi. These are your results, your effects. You are all in samadhi right now, distracted by your particular objects of fascination, interest, tendency. It is so. Whenever objects arise, you are separate and you become involved in a profound state of self-pleasuring. Even if what arises is not a pleasurable object, it is so distracting that you become totally self-involved in pain, sorrow, anger. Even these states, which are not pleasurable, capture you and enforce the sense of separateness. There are samadhis of pain as well as pleasure. In your ordinary disposition, you are wandering in samadhi, like the traditional yogis, saints and sages. Compared to the objects they are holding on to passionately, your objects look rather stupid or ordinary, certainly most mundane by com comparison. Yet it is the same business. You are consoled by money, food and sex. One could say that these are samadhis, states of absorption, consolation and distraction of such magnitude that you forget, for the moment at any rate, your problem, and feel that somehow the consoling and distracting and absorbing object is enough and makes life worth living. You are in a state of utter consolation, or, in other words, a state of consumed self-pleasuring, absorbed in the consumption of self-pleasuring, deeply embedded in it for the moment. Of course, the moment passes, this and that happens, and then you are seeking and complaining again. What is the difference between you and somebody who, coming out of some conditional samadhi in the fifth stage of life, complains and wants to struggle to make it happen again? I have been communicating just this criticism during all the years since I formally began my work with everyone 22 years ago. I communicated the same critical disposition in the need of listening, I have always been communicating this criticism to you. Many kinds of experiences and samadhis are valued in the great tradition. The great tradition criticises the mundane attachments and objects that people choose and by which they are distracted, but not the esoteric ones. From the beginning, I have come to you criticising the esoteric ones as well. There are no experiences in the context of the first six stages of life no samadhis, no objects of any kind whatsoever that are most ultimate realization. They are all the dramatizations and the results of egoity. In the scale of the stages of life, yes, some are better than others, fine, but they are about the same thing. As a beginner in the way of the heart, you are ego bound in the context of the first three stages of life, considering my heart word and observing the limitations of egoity. Therefore, you can also observe the traditions and see that they are not doing anything fundamentally different from the ordinary dramatization of egoity. You must do something fundamentally different, not only at the beginning of the way of the heart, but all along, as the signs of the stages of life appear. There is just one principle, one way, one practice, one discipline, one sadhana. It is Ishta Guru Bhakti Yoga in my company. The counter-egoic effort, transcending the primary fault and entering into the sphere of non-separateness. In the great tradition, although disciplines and various kinds of sadhana are usually recommended, the principal practice recommended within any school is concentration in the ultimate ego object that is associated with the stage of life in which the school is based. It is not 
that these developmental experiences of the body-mind are just garbage to be referred to without respect. That is not my opinion, and, I'm, and that is not what I am suggesting to you. But I am indicating that you must most fundamentally understand which is the fault that carries through it through all the first six stages of life. Whatever your present mode of practice of the way of the heart, whatever stage of life is associated with it, there is just one thing to be done, one thing fundamentally to be understood, one practice. Only ultimate realization is to be valued, not by seeking, but by true self-understanding and right devotion to me. No phenomenon that must be experienced in the context of the first six stages of life is most perfect realization. None. Examine the stages of life. Examine the great tradition in its display of all the exercises that can be done. You tell me, are there any processes, some sadhanas, effects, objects, samadhi states, that are not, as I have just told you, not forms of the ego gain? You tell me. Consider it in yourself, in your present focus, in the traditions, if you like. Is what I am saying true or not? Consider it. You cannot be silly, egoically self-possessed householders and still realise everything. You talk about the things that console you in the most mundane sense, as if they are great samadhis. They are samadhis of a kind, states of absorption, bizarre ecstasies of egoic self-possession, and utter distraction in which nothing else is noticed, like hormonally induced obsessions. All, of a, all I want to do is have sex and fool around. That is samadhi, but it is an absurd samadhi. It is not great samadhi. There is nothing divine about it. It is the samadhi of distractedness by all kinds of emotional and sexual objects, patterning and adaptation. Everything is excluded except the object of obsession, and you feel, this is it, this is good, this is what life is about, and what I should devote myself to. It feels perfectly good. Why should I not just do it? What has anything else got to do with anything? I do not even know about anything else. All I know about is genitals, or household security. Whatever your obsession may be, you are in a kind of samadhi. You are not yet involved in the advance and the ultimate stages of life, because you are involved in a lesser samadhi. All the samadhis of the first six stages of life are self-absorbed, ego-based states of self-pleasure, and in their moment they are all equally distracting. This is it. I do not need anything more. I do not want anything more. What else do I know anyway? All I have before me is genitals, household comfort, lunch, some gastric balance, some emptied intestinal state. It feels good and you have no time to do anything else. Hawk it, hammer on it, repeat it. All this is what you do. When I am talking to people who are still beginners in the way of the heart, nonetheless, I am talking to people in Samadhi. I might just as well be talking to people who have experienced fifth stage conditional Nirvikabhi Samadhi or who are presently involved in Savikalpa Samadhi and seeing lights. Something jumping up and down, moving around, being bright and distracting, so they cannot think about anything else. It is the same stuff. This is the difficulty with you beginners. You are in Samadhi, not the divine Samadhi, but one or the other of the Samadhis of Egoity. In your case, the Samadhis of the first three stages of life. Anybody in such samadhi who thinks that everything is fine, who thinks that whatever he or she is distracted by is the goal of life, who is consoled by the object of distraction, and who resists any greater obligation, any greater understanding, any greater practice is a fool. To people who are so called in love, for example, everything but the romantic object is utter garbage. All they want to do is the in-love thing, the romance thing, 
and the sex thing associated with it. They cannot see what they are doing. They have no discrimination about it. They have no impulse to understand it or go beyond it. They do not feel it particularly as pain at the moment. They do not know its future, the karma, the result, the tendencies that follow, the mortality with which it is identified. All they know is their present state of self-pleasure and consolation, and they think their obsession justifies it. They are enjoying a state of absorption, a kind of samadhi wherein everything is excluded except the distracting object. Nothing else is known, nothing else is remembered, and there is no attention for anything else. The various traditions of the great tradition propose that people in great states are advanced beyond the crowd and therefore traditionally everything ordinary is regarded negatively. Yet to right understand it is clear that people in the early stages of life who are not involved with the esoteric exaggerations are doing the same thing as those in the great state. Ordinary people are in samadhi too distracted like fools, at the moment without any capability for discrimination. In due course, everyone in the first six stages of life experiences the failure of his or her distraction and wants to seek some kind, some more and become bewildered again. In the moment of samadhi, in the moment of your fascination, however, you cannot listen, you cannot understand, you have no discrimination. You tend to lose your discipline altogether. Therefore, samadhis are the problem, not the solution. Except for the samadhi with a capital S of most ultimate realisation, the problem is that ordinary people are in samadhi. Because of this, they cannot understand themselves and they cannot respond to the divine. Gosh, that's telling us, isn't it? Thank you, beloved, for telling us that. You've been telling us that ever since, as you said, the near of listening. So who's, who's at fault, the teacher or the devotee? The divine condition is already the case. You're not the only one telling us that. They're your words. Consciousness of a capital C. I feel the self-contraction and I feel towards you. Go beyond the self-contraction to that which is already happiness, joy, delight. Communion with you is communion with the divine. Feeling the divine which is prior to you even, prior to your bodily human form. Dark.